you know, working reliably. Overall, this is a very good result. All of these overhangs came out really nice. Alright, welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today, we're going to be addressing one of the big concerns people have had with this K1. And that's that it's too small. I mean, look at this build area. It's tiny. It's only about the same size as an Ender 3. Well, I've got some good news for you, and that's that Creality has sent over this K1 Max for us to take a look at. This has a 300 by 300 build volume, so much larger and it should have about the same feature set with a couple of extra bonuses on here. So let's take it out of the bag and see what it's all about. So this is how it comes out of the box. Just uh, undo this bag. We've got this glass pane that goes on top. And this thing comes with a full spool of filament. Oop, and there's more stickers. And the last thing I'll do to finish assembly is just plug the screen in. There we go. You want to remove the silver screws that the arrows are pointing to. It's important not to remove the wrong screw here. But wait, there's one last sticker here I need to remove. I like to press these down just to make sure that those stickerized letters are firmly attached. And then I'll peel off the protective layer. Now you can see the resemblance between the K1 Max and the K1. These machines look almost exactly the same, it's just the K1 Max is a little bit larger. The frame is still made out of cast aluminum, and it's got reflective clear panels on all sides, so it looks really nice. It's also got the same touchscreen interface, which I really liked on the K1. If you want to set up your network using the touchscreen, you can. Another option for network connectivity is Ethernet. So you can see on the back here, we've got a little Ethernet plug, and it also has an activated carbon filter here. It's pretty nice, it's got those little uh, beads inside of it, and there's our chamber evacuation fan. At this point it asks if you want to bind your device to the Creality Cloud. I would pretty much always say skip there. I'm not really interested in using the cloud features of this machine. While it's running the self-inspection, we can take a look at some of the features inside of this machine. It essentially has the same print head as the Creality K1, just the Max has this additional LiDAR module, which we can see here. I'm not sure what exactly this LiDAR module does. Even if the LiDAR doesn't work, I think this will still be a very useful machine, thanks to its size and speed. Also, you'll notice we've got a little camera here, and the camera has a little sticker on it, so go ahead and peel that off. Alright, so now it's doing its little input shaping thing. And as you could hear earlier, the printer does make a bit of noise, and that's just because this bottom of the printer is like a big resonance chamber for those stepper motors that drive the Z-axis. And it's not too bad, especially when you're doing normal prints. It's not going to be moving the Z-axis all that much. These are just butyl rubber sheets that I can set into the bottom of the machine. The other thing you can do to quiet the machine down is to close the front and the top panel. And overall, I'd say this is a very quiet machine. Another thing I'm noticing is that it's got this uh, kind of reddish heater element on the bottom. This looks like it's a machined plate, so this should be exceptionally flat. So right now it's just running through its basic bed leveling procedure. We'll let that finish up and then we'll try running some prints. All right, and according to the bottom screen, the self-test is now completed. So let's fire up a print job. Let's go straight for the Benchy. It says it'll be a 16 minute Benchy, which is exactly the same as the Creality K1. I can hear one fan out the back, but it's muffled by the filter that they've included. So that's kind of nice. This machine is pretty quiet, but they could make it even quieter if they filled up all the gaps along the edges. For instance, along the door hinge, there's a tiny gap, and down here there's a little bit of a gap. So if that really bothers you, there might be some way to print out some little upgrades that'll help close those off and make it even quieter. But as is, it's not a super loud machine. I'll pull out my little decibolo meter and see what we're working with. So here I'm about an arm's length away from the machine. We're looking at 47 decibels. Now you'll also notice on this graph there's these two horizontal lines. Also you've got one up here around 15 kilohertz. So there is a bit of coil wine going on there. Yeah, I'd say it's in the 45 to 48 decibel range for most stuff. We'll see what it gets to when it starts moving around. All right, so now that we've got our speed benchy going, I'm gonna do another measurement of the sound levels. We'll do an arm's length away again. And this machine isn't too loud. It's right around 55 decibels, even when it's printing super fast with all the fans on. So not bad at all. I'm going to take another measurement with the lid off and the front open to see how much noise those two elements are really blocking. So we're an arm's length away again, and we'll see what we got. 
right around 63 decibels. Having the lid on definitely quiets things down quite a bit. Let's see how this Benchy turned out. There's some remnants of the black filament that I guess was the test filament in there. It's a great little Benchy. Not a whole lot to complain about here. There is a tiny bit of stringing, but that'll clean up extremely easily. So let's fire up another test print. Let's print out that test cube just because it finishes quickly. You can see it looks really good. All of these overhangs came out really nice, even on the square and the circle. And this Y and X looks really nice. They really improved the print quality on this machine. This is a huge upgrade over the K1. I'm hoping that it's just like some software and firmware updates that they did that hopefully they'll roll out onto the K1. But also this extruder that they've included seems a bit different than their original design. So this is the extruder on the old K1. I'm guessing they've done some improvements to the metallurgy and made sure that it's tightened up better. But these are, this is all just speculation. From what I can tell, the prints are coming out a lot nicer. And this is an extruder that I wouldn't feel like I need to replace. So that's awesome that Creality is working on things that we complain about and making their products better. I've only spent one day using the K1 Max, but from what I've seen, I'm seriously impressed. It has a much larger build volume than the K1, and it's also quite a bit bigger than the P1P. The 300 by 300 build area is big enough for most things that you'll need to do. When you get larger than this, then you start running out of one kilogram spools to be able to finish your parts in one shot. So this is pretty much the optimal size for any type of large prototyping that you might do. The K1 Max is also quieter thanks to its glass top and better overall sound insulation. So it's quieter when it's running at full speed and it's also quieter at idle. When I listen to my K1, I can hear some fan going here. That's part of the power supply. Versus the K1 Max, I don't hear any audible fans on this machine while it's on at idle. Also, it's just as fast as the K1 with even higher print quality than the K1 that I received. My K1 had some issues where it was slightly under extruding all the time, but as far as I can tell, that's been completely resolved in this machine. Of these test prints that I've ran, this thing had excellent print quality on everything. There's a slight bit of ringing, but Overall, it's really not that bad, and it also comes with a pretty nice webcam. Once you've sliced your model, you can go to the device and click Details, and this will let you see the webcam feed. So here you can see I've got our nice little webcam feed. Using this webcam, you can see what's going on while you're printing, and also I believe it saves the time lapses. So I just wanted to share my thoughts on this machine. It's definitely going to be my go-to machine from now on, just because it has a combination of a huge build volume, high print speed, good quality, and a really excellent user interface. This is just a really, really nice machine. In fact, I'd go as far to say as it's my favorite machine that I have at this point in time. I don't want to make this video too long because I'm planning on doing a full deep dive where I tear down the extruder and look under the base of the machine because while Creality Print is a pretty nice and functional piece of software, I would really like to be able to run just stock clipper on here and use whatever slicer I want. Having to go through Creality Print presents a little bit of a bottleneck for me but it's not too bad. I've been using it lately and it gets the job done, but there's always room for improvement here. I'm really looking forward to those open source files becoming available so that we can get some community firmware on here. All right, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned for some more content on this K1 Max and I'll see you in the next video.